This week on Steel's Real in the Outdoors with Joe Thomas. Nice one. Big one, Jerry. Nice. It's a big one. Oh, he came off in the air. Nice. <laughs> yep, here he comes. <laughs> yes! Straight down, straight down. He's right on the boat. That's it. Got, Got him. him. Yeah, nice. baby. I'm Joe Thomas. For over 25 years, I've made my living with a rod and reel. And today, more than ever, I'm still fascinated by the people that make fishing a uniquely American pursuit. What you're about to see is real. This is Steel's Real in the Outdoors. Real in the Outdoors with Joe Thomas is presented by Steel. Are you ready for a Steel? And by Peak. Run true. By Brookfield Renewable Energy, proud partner of the National Wear It Campaign. By AES, makers of products for every season. And by Billy Chapman Jr.'s Anglers Inn International. Hi, I'm Joe Thomas and welcome to Steel's Reel in the Outdoors. You know, there's an old truism that says everything old eventually becomes new again. And that is so true in fishing. So many times new baits come out and the old baits get shelved for years, only to be rediscovered eventually. And you know why they get rediscovered? It's because they work. Today's show is about a bait that doesn't really grab the flashy headlines, but it has seen a resurgence in popularity. I guarantee you've seen it, and more than likely you fished it and probably even have a couple in your tackle box. But this bait can truly get the job done. It's the original rooster tail. Since the rooster tail was developed by Howard Warden way back in the 50s, this simple inline spinner has been on Field & Stream's top 50 list for decades. And the reason it is, is because it works. And today I'm gonna to put that classic bait to work with my good friend, Jerry Gosnick. Now, Jerry is the Michigan smallmouth bass guru. And we're going to Lake Michigan today. It's kind of a change of pace for us. And we're gonna fish Grand Traverse Bay. Now, even though it's July and the water temperatures are cooler than I would really like, he really thinks that these smallmouth are starting to move up and might be willing to chase a little. When you look at this water, we're up here in about four, four and a half. Oh, that was a little one hit it right there four and a half feet, and it's like fishing the flats in Florida. I mean, it looks like, you know, the Keys or something like that. But all we're doing right now is targeting the boulders. And it seems like if we can burn that bait right past one of those boulders, we can get a bite. And all we do is we're just looking for dark spots and just meandering back and forth. And um, the crazy thing to me is it's 4th of July and we're catching spawning bass. I mean, is that common up here? I mean, on, on Lake St. Clair, there's usually always fish spawning, you know, the first week of May. Um, it'll last a month on the lake down there, you know, depending on where you're at on the lake. Um, then, on, then on the the inland lakes up here in northern Michigan, the spawn will be around the same time. Um, if you want to continue to catch spawning fish, you can kind of shift to the big water, and things are a month behind. So that's what gets you to come here in July. You just like fishing that shallow bite. I mean. By now, they're already deep on St. Clair, aren't they? Yeah, they're already starting to get into their summer pattern up there. And, uh, you know, up here, we're, we're doing what we did on St. Clair over two months ago. So, it's very unique. I mean, it's a unique part of Michigan here. You know, with the big water, um, you know, Michigan's just a big, giant peninsula. Uh, all of the northern parts of, of Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, you can uh, catch spawning bass well into July most years. Good one? I haven't seen them yet. Oh yeah. Decent one. Nice fish. There, this, they are, look how dark that one is. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that the greatest bite though, when they fish. smack that thing, you're, you're burning as hard as you can burn it, and they just take it out of your hands. That guy came off of one little dark spot right here. I wonder what that was. Uh, a bed. Nice fish. Nice job. Nice yeah. job. Well, he wasn't coming off of that. It's coming together here. Start, starting to get in the groove. Yep, okay. yep, we can feel it. Hey, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with Michigan Smallmouth from Grand Traverse Bay in two minutes. 
Real in the Outdoors with Joe Thomas is presented by Steel and your neighborhood Steel Power Equipment dealer. Are you ready for a steal? Steel. German engineering. American manufacturing. Servicing dealers. And people across America who refuse to compromise. Real people. Steel people. Join us. As a professional angler, I've spent thousands of days on the water. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that conditions can change. So pay attention to your surroundings and be alert to signs, buoys, sirens, and barriers that warn of potential hazards. And let someone know where you're going, who you're gonna be with, and how long you plan to be gone. And most importantly, always, always wear your life jacket. It's the one way to make certain we'll all have fun on the water. Brookfield Renewable Energy Group reminds you to wear it and share the river safely. Engineered to excel, the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series are packed with advantages and exclusive features. Coupled with Evinrude E-Tech's power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer schedule maintenance, the accelerated standards of the Ranger Z series are driven to dominate. From first light to last cast, they're put together to set you apart. Experience more with Evinrude E-Tech. Before Zeiss lenses are ready for Browning's Impact Series, they go through a rigorous testing regimen at the Zeiss Labs. They're tested for high mass impact, hydrophobics, and anti-reflective polarization. But the real test comes here, in the field, with the Browning Pro Staff. Introducing Browning's Impact Series eyewear, featuring Zeiss Impacto lenses, the first sunglasses ever to feature this level of impact resistance, hydrophobics, and polarization. Browning Performance Eyewear, the best there is. If you've watched this show for any length of time, then you've definitely seen this guy. My guest, Jerry Gosnick. Every time I go to Michigan or make any pilgrimage north, I'm gonna take this guy because he is the smallmouth guru. Now my standard Clearwater smallmouth go-to bait is the Lucky Craft Pointer Minnow. The 100 or the 112 is what I use and have caught thousands of bass over the years. And since then, Jerry's turned me on to some other techniques that work really well too, like the pink soft plastic jerk bait and the blade bait in cold water. But I want to tell you something. From my many years of fishing Great Lakes in tournaments, I had one little secret stashed in my box. I'm retired from tournament fishing now. I thought I'd turn Jerry on to it, and you too. He crushed it. I saw him come up and get it. Look at him in that water. Look at him. Look in that clear water. That's awesome. Nice fish. And I always think they're bigger when they hit. They're just that's just such a you know such a vicious strike. Now that one was more dark when he came off the bottom. You know he he looked almost black. A lot of these fish we've been seeing here in this bay. I think a lot of it has to do with you were talking earlier, Jerry, about the sand. You know, it makes them almost have a milky color to them. But that's just a great Well, I fish. think we've kind of changed locations a yeah. little bit too with a little bit more rock right. in it. These yeah. fish are a little bit darker. Yeah. Good solid one. Yeah, nice fish. This place has got them. All right, brother. Nice. It's done. Nice. That's the one thing in just about any fishery. You can be on them and have the right pattern and the right bait, but as the day goes on, a lot of times you got to evolve. If you don't evolve, with the conditions, and right now the sun's popped out and these fish is just, have just gotten shallower, and uh, I think that that's gonna be a key probably for the rest of the day. You know, we could have sat out here all day long and probably caught some, but we've moved around and I think we've dialed it in. I mean, don't you see that all the time, Jerry? Yeah, I do, you know, and also with my experience, you know, if, if things aren't working, especially with smallmouth fishing on the Great Lakes, usually they're not there. It's not as difficult 
as you make it seem a lot of times. You know, and particularly in the spawn, in correct. around the spawn. You know, yeah. we've changed you know gears a little bit here, and, and uh, I think we're starting to put it together here. There's a bed right there, man. There's a bed right there. I don't know much about nothing, but I will make a prediction right now that we will get a bite out of that clump of grass up there. It looks very, very juicy. It's it's completely isolated out here in the middle of this big flat, right where that turquoise water comes in, and there's a big clump of grass there. A little bit deeper water, oh, just behind it too. I've sold myself on the fact that there's gonna be one there. Now, I want you to look, it's like, it looks like bath water, man. I mean, totally looks like bath water. And since I'm such a nice guy. I get to throw at it? You get to throw at it first. Uh, you've been crushing me here today. Well, I've been, I've actually been able to put my bait in first every time, so. Yeah, but I've been hitting some key stuff too. It's just uh, your, your day today. I'm just gonna coast. I got him. Nice one. It's a big one, Jer. Nice. I just can't really say a big one's under my bait. You need a hand, you're gonna swing. Uh, he's gonna jump though, I'm afraid. Oh, look at that water. Look at it. Nice. Coming in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. baby. That's awesome. Solid That's fish. That's a solid fish, man. We're getting them figured out. Keep making moves and adjustments, and just slowly but surely, we just keep, keep racking them up. And there is no doubt in my mind, and I know you're thinking the same thing, because you've gone to the, you've thrown the pointer a few times and some other things. I think we're throwing the right bait. I mean, this is, they want this bait, don't they? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's definitely been key been this key, trip. Key to making this trip a success. Yeah, you're gonna have a couple of them. You already had a couple of them in your box. I know you did. <laughs> awesome. That's so good. Hey, don't go away. I'll be right back with more Steels Reel in the Outdoors from Traverse City, Michigan. Sorry, dude. <laughs> You're the professional well, you know guide. What? You're supposed My, to let your I am. I'm you're guiding. You're supposed to let me catch them. I'm guiding today. That's, that's your job is to let me catch How them. How am I doing? To be honest with you, the last two trips I've been with you, you have warmed my tail. Just just remember that, okay? Very rarely do I outfish you on smallmouth. Closed captioning is provided by American Modern Insurance Group, the home for exclusive Joe Thomas fishing tip videos and bass boat insurance designed by anglers for anglers. Sorry guys, I never would have thought making duck calls would have stirred up this much inside. Oh, you got them coming up here. Shortcut time! Yeah. You sure this is a good idea? Oh yeah, I got this. I can't guarantee you how this will end, but Pete can guarantee your radiator for life. Introducing the Peak Run True Guarantee. Check it out at peakguarantee.com. The rumors are true. There's a brand new Trophy Mexican Bass Lake. Welcome to Lake Picachos. And there's only one way to experience it. The Angler's Inn Way. Hall of Fame outfitter Billy Chapman Jr. is bringing his legendary service to Lake Picachos. Experience Mexico's newest trophy bass lake, Lake Picachos, the Angler's Inn Way. Now's the time to make your plans. Call today to experience Lake Picachos, the Angler's Inn Way. Nice. <laughs> I got him. Nice one. It's a big one, Jer. Nice. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I don't know. I just got I got the I got the horseshoe today. I hate, like to tell you I'm really bummed out, but I'm really having a good time. I'm bummed. Oh, I'm, I'm having, bummed you're not catching as many I'm as you want. I'm having a blast as well, Joe. Hey, I'm Joe Thomas, and welcome back to Steel's Reel in the Outdoors. Now, if you're just joining us, I'm on Lake Michigan in Grand Traverse Bay, fishing with my good friend and guide, Jerry Gostinick. And we've been burning rooster tails and covering a lot of water, and have caught some great smallmouths, but it hasn't been all fun and games. We've had to make some major adjustments to get the job done, and really, I saw something today I'd never seen before. You know, anytime you're on a fishing trip, even throughout the day, you got to make a lot of adjustments. And we have, we've made a lot of adjustments today. Not only have we moved shallower 
but we've also moved about 10 miles closer to Lake Michigan. And Jerry, I want you to explain to everybody the scenario that happened here. It's the craziest thing that I've ever, I've ever seen. And you said you've seen it before. Tell them what happened. Well, two days before we got here, we had a real, real heavy uh, south, southwest wind. And what happened is it actually flipped the water in the bay. Craziest thing I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, I mean, the water went from being in uh, the low 60s to 42 to 44 degrees this morning. And uh, I mean, the fish have just, I mean, they're, they're, they're in shock right now. So we've actually, you know, made the decision to come a little bit further north and we're finding much warmer water. Yeah, we literally- 10 ran, miles north. We ran 10 miles north and have been picking up a degree or two almost every mile. Yeah. And now we're in 60 degree water and there, there's fish spawning and movement. And it literally blew all of that warm water from the upper end of the lake down to this end. And uh, you know, I've never seen that in, on any lake. You'd never think that, but that's what's happened. And now we're in a target rich environment. Yeah, this is a very unique body of water too. I mean, you've got 500 feet of water and this thing's only two and a half three miles across and you know I mean you don't you don't have that kind of depth of water you know no. anywhere we fish in the Great Lakes so it's it's a very unique system and you know I mean when you when you see that real cold water like that you've got to make some adjustments or you're just gonna die yeah and you want to have a temperature gauge you, not, you need to have your yeah, temperature if you don't have gauge that you're completely lost yeah you're in trouble Unique body of water is right. I mean, it goes totally against my grain to head towards the main lake to find warmer water. But that's exactly what we've done. I got him. He came off that boulder, Jerry. Yep, he did. Man, I'm telling you what, if you're not smoking that, that bait, if you're just not smoking it, they're not, they, it's almost like they'll come up and look at it. I think with smallmouth, you talked about that reaction strike before. You can't reel it too fast for them, agreed? I, I do agree. Yeah, and, and if you know this water now has gotten up to 62, 63 degrees, so it's in their comfort range. And if you think you're gonna reel it faster than they can get it, I guarantee you that's not true. And and I've noticed if you start to slow it down and you start to get it to go slower, you know, those fish will come up and they'll look at it and they'll turn away, you know? So, yeah, you got it, you gotta bring out that killer instinct yeah. with you know in them and that the way to do that is to burn that bait. You know, I think too, one of the keys in this clear water is you make a long cast. And with this bait in particular, rooster tail, I always pop it a couple times to get that blade turning and then just kind of point your rod at it and let her eat, you know? Yep. That way when they get, when they get a, a, a take a swing at it, you got that full potential for a hook set. Good fish right there, bud. You're not allowed to catch them big ones when I'm down. Hang on, I'll get him for you. Here, tie on a new bait, and you do that to me. Come on now. Look at that one. That's a that's a good fish, Jerry. If I can get my hand in his mouth. Oh, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Look at nice. that one. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah, nice job, man. Nice. Awesome. You know what, Grabbing Joe? Thumbing. I seen it. I just seen one lone, one lone boulder there. Yeah. Just threw that rooster burned tail it by, by it. it. Just burned it by it. He came up and just snatched that's it. That's just that's that's that weird. that one that fish. I'm telling you, just moved up. Look yeah. how fat he just is. Just swelled up. And our water temperature is like 58 here right now. That's like the starting range for the spawning. And here's the thing: in Grand Traverse Bay, where we're at, it's it's July. I mean, it's the first of July, and these fish are just starting to, to move up. And that's because right out there is 200 feet of water. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy how cold the water is for you know midsummer. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you something. Would you like me to just sit in the bottom of the boat and just dink with my tackle for a couple hours so you could? You can stand back there and point out some rocks. For I'll me. do that. You got <laughs> it. No problem. Hey, don't go away. I'll be right back with more Lake Michigan smallmouth and this week's Ranger Evanrude real highlight. Steel's Real in the Outdoors is presented by Tightline UV Lure Company. Give your lures ultimate vision with Tightline UV technology.
Good one. Got him. There he is. Oh, he crushed it. Isn't that the greatest bite, though, when they smack that thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. baby. Nice. <laughs> that was good, man. Yeah, nice job, man. Nice. Off. Last year, the folks at Rooster Tail ran a contest. They wanted to see how many species of fish could be caught on that one lure, and the results were amazing. 52 species on that one versatile lure. But Jerry and I are only interested in one species, and that's what we're after today. One of those days, they're biting. It's so much fun. That's just the most beautiful fish on the planet. And that's this week's Ranger Evinrood Real Highlight. Today's Real Highlight is presented by Ranger Boats, powered by Evinrood E-Tech Outboards. Ranger, still building legends one at a time. That one hit so hard, Jerry. Right on that dark spot. It's gonna jump. Coming right at it's gonna you, jump. too. This could be a really big one, bud. I'm serious. Oh, it is a big one, dude. Look at him. Wow. Whoa, what a giant. What a magnum. Look at the swing. Look at the size of that smallie, Jerry. Oh, please, please don't come off. That's a monster. Oh, God. Mm. I'm gonna swing him. You sure? Yep. Here we go. Catch him. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> that is a magnum, buddy. I just want to tell you, that is a pig. I mean, a pig. Gosh! You are the man. You weren't so ugly. I would. That might be the one we saw. I would kiss you earlier on the lips. No, I wouldn't really. But anyway. Gosh, that's a great fish. Look at that. What a toad. I mean, what a toad. Whew. Having a great day, dude. Yeah, awesome. That's a that's a solid four pounder. Oh yeah. Every, just moved up. Every bit of it. And just crushed it. And we have just little tweaks all day long. We made our move down the bay. We got a little shallower. The sun got out. We can see the grass. We know we're throwing the right bait. I mean, this bait has just been magic today. Yes. Beautiful fish. Yes. Nice. Your turn. Whew. I just, just sharpened that hook too. I'm glad these suckers got a big hook on them. Got some more stuff right here, man. You know, you know what's cool about that though, is you can swing a big fish. You know, yeah. with that braid, you know, you can swing a big fish. You got and that what, a big 50, hook. 15 pound fluorocarbon. Yeah. That the, big hook. The, the leader's a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, and then I've got the uh, 40 pound braid, and that swivel, and uh, you know, what's really even cooler is we fish these baits hard for hours and, not, you know, our lines haven't twisted no, because not, of the swivel. not one bit. Yeah. That's a perfect example of an old lure making a big comeback. So if you haven't added the rooster tail to your bass fishing arsenal, it might be time you did. Oh, that's a big fish, man. Let me come underneath you, man. Yeah, I'm getting mine in. My bait's still way out of here. Jumping. It's oh, a good one, man. Jumping, jumping, jumping. Oh, he's wanting to jump so bad. There's one with him, too. There's a big one with him, yeah. Drop your tube in, drop your tube in. Right straight down, straight down. He's right under the boat. Drop it straight down, Jerry. That's a good fish, man. He's got that bait hanging. Look came in the clear water. I see the other one. Came in the clear water. Coming in. <laughs> oh, he came off in the air. <laughs> nice. You know, if I would have messed around, if I would have messed around with that fish, if I would have messed, nice job, buddy. If I would have messed around with that fish, he would have come off. And I just, I, you know how a lot of times, and that's the thing with having braided line and a big hook and all that, you can you can just swing him in with like a jerk bait, an eight or 10 pound test line. Good four pounder. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, you don't have to have that luxury, but what a fish, man, just a beautiful fish. These fish are just moving up, Joe. Yeah. He still looks like a, a big pre-spawn. Yeah. You, you know, and the thing is, Jerry, I want to tell you something, buddy. Always, every time I come to Michigan, Michigan with Jerry Gosnick, I'm, it's, it's one of the deals, we're, we're gonna catch some fish. And uh, I was a little nervous when you drug me up here and we saw that cold water, but it's warmed up as the day went on. And uh, I wanna tell you something, whether you go with this guy on Lake St. Clair or whether you go with him on, on Mullet or Torch or Burt or Grand Traverse Bay, he's gonna deliver. Amazing day, man. As wow. always, as always.
My very special thanks to my good friend Jerry Gosnick. Jerry continues to deliver great trips to Michigan every year, and he'll take you too if you just give him a call. I'm Joe Thomas, and I'll see you next time. But first, here's a peek at next week's show presented by Rooster Tail, the world's most versatile multi species lure. Woo hoo hoo, babe! That is a Carter Lake Magnum spot. Look at that thing. Look at the oh. size of that monster, Ron. Yeah. Roll <laughs> well, that drink. He's bad. <laughs> Steel's Reel in the Outdoors is presented in part by Finn's Premium Superline. Finn's Fish is Better. By Minn Kota, Humminbird, Talon, and Lake Master. By Lucky Craft Lure Product and Development. By Arky, makers of the original Bass Jet, White Island Chevrolet, and Dixie Marine. It's getting a little sunshine. Perfect temperature. Starting to feel it. You're getting a, you're getting a little, little swagger? Oh, I'm step? feeling it, definitely. I feel... Get that little swagger in your step. Feel real good about what's going on right now.